I am the Flat Rate Master, and today we're talking about Bay Management. How to manage your bays to maximize your paycheck. Your lifts, your bays, how to maximize what you can produce out of them by managing your workflow with everything that you can control. Now, disclaimer, we have to talk about some of the stuff your boss may not allow, some, you're, you just may not be able to do some of this stuff. It's the boss's house, boss's rules. But this is what I do to manage my bays. All right, we're gonna talk about single bays first, and then we'll kind of get into multiple bays. Depending on your situation, Everything that happens with a single bay will apply when you got more than one bay, so we're going to focus on single bays. Now, if you notice, I'm not in front of the toolbox. I'm in front of this H3. Why? Well, this is a perfect example. I have a dead bay. There was a screw-up with the parts ordered. It was... Radiator, brake flush, front and rear brakes, belt, tensioner, you know, good ticket. Unfortunately, I don't have rotors, so I got a dead bay. Perfect time to talk about bay management. First and foremost, never kill a bay until you have all of your parts and approval. If you don't have approval, Keep checking cars out. Big rule for me, don't tear down a car extensively unless you absolutely have to, meaning it stays as complete as possible so I can get it out of my bay, pull the next car in to check out. So let's say you're doing, you know, brake check. You got to pull the wheels off. There's no way around it. Pull the wheels off, check everything out, ride it up, slap those wheels back on, pull it out, move on to the next one. Tear down as little as possible. I mean, sometimes that's just not possible. You know, when you've got a wiring problem on the interior where you got to tear half the interior apart, you kind of have to tear it apart. So not much you can do about that. Next one, maximize your efficiency while you have that vehicle in the bay. Let's say you pull in a car for maintenance check and oil change. Well, while you have it on the lift, you've got approval for that oil change, go ahead and knock it out. Because let's say they, you write it up for brakes, a timing belt, et cetera, et cetera, and they approve nothing, you're done with the car. You don't have to pull it back in. Now, you know, if it came in for brakes and, you know, some other stuff, well, you're gonna have, probably going to have to wait for parts, so hold off on that stuff. But do the oil change and move on. Grab that next car. It's important when you have only one bay, until you have everything you need, you need to keep the bay open. So you can keep checking out cars. Now, obviously, if you run out of cars, you can leave the bay hung up, but keep pulling in cars, keep checking them out. Now, again, your boss may not let you do that. They're, I've seen guys where you get one ticket, and until that thing settles out, whether it gets approved, whether it gets declined, that's the only car you're getting until that one's done. It's a horrible system, but unfortunately, their house, their rules. All right, large jobs. This is where it can kill you as having only one bay. Make sure, double check, triple check, make sure every part you will possibly need is on that ticket. So... You know, you don't have that issue with, oh, well, I need this part. It's two days out. Then you're trying to figure out how to get a car out of the bay so you can go back to work and make money. If you're looking at a car and a part might get broken, add it to the parts list. If nothing else, if you didn't need it, take it off the estimate. Send it back to the parts store. But if you need that part, you want to make sure it's there in-house so you can go ahead and put it in. And the customer's aware of the possibility of needing that part. Now, we do that all the time with BMWs and Volkswagen plastic parts. Anybody that works on Volkswagen and BMWs in the United States knows those plastic parts break all the time. You touch them, 
They disintegrate. So we add them to the ticket, and if we don't break it, it goes back to our parts store. We break it, we've got the part, we can slap it on, the customer's already aware of the cost. Not a second call back. We all like money. Dead bays don't make us money. So make sure you can get that car out so you can move on to the next ticket. You know, let's say, oh, well, they're just trying to decide. Kick it to the curb, move on to the next. The worst thing you can do is tear, pull a car in, tear it down, be playing on your phone or whatever, when you could be pulling in that next car and make some money. We all know how this business works. You pull a car in, you check it out, hope you get some work, move on to the next car. Well, move on to the next car. Keep moving on until you run out of cars or you get approvals. Once you get approvals, once you get parts, pull it in, tear it down. Now, on this car, I broke my rule. One, because I've got two bays here. So I've got another bay, so I don't have two dead bays, and I'm not stuck. But customer wanted the car back tomorrow morning. I needed to get it torn down so I could get it back together so he could have it back tomorrow morning. Unfortunately, he's not getting it back tomorrow morning. So little screw up with our parts people. It happens. But I got another bay, so it's all good. Which brings me to if you've got two or more bays. Don't ever kill more than one bay. If you've got two bays, three bays, great. Gives you the option to kill a more bay so you don't have to put wheels back on, stuff like that. But if you've only got two bays, make sure you've got a bay open to pull cars in and check out. Again, this bay ain't making me any money right now. It's just taking up space because I can't do anything because the brakes are completely torn apart. I've got another bay, so I've got ability to make money. My whole point of that is don't kill your bay. Killing your bay kills your pocketbook. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit that bell notification so you get notified when I put out a new video. If you didn't like the video, give me a thumbs down. Maybe you don't like Hummer H3s. Comments are always appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master.